Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. We're so glad you're here. We're having a blast on this FunFi train as we discover high fidelity and arguably audiophile grade capabilities down here at the entry level for us to explore and enjoy. I love the small footprint. I love the affordable price. I love the different capabilities. We're taking a look at the Zen Blue from IFI that combines a Bluetooth transmitter and receiver in real lossless quality. This time I mean it guys. And also a DAC and I love DACs. I'm having a blast exploring that. So let's take a look, unbox it, test it out. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome back to the studio. So glad to have you here. It's IFI time. It's been a while since we've done any IFI stuff, but I'm super excited to do so. As you can see by the layout in front of you, we've done four other shows at least there may even be others of ifi products in the past and today is no exception but before we get on to that product i want to kind of quickly recap the others and yes they do share very similar form factors sort of the signature in this range of ifi products let's start right here this i believe was the first ifi thing we ever reviewed this is the ifi zen phono preamp now you'll Notice the signature shape, like we mentioned, is pretty uniform throughout this product line. This obviously is a moving magnet and actually moving coil phono preamp, which is super cool. There's little pin LEDs here indicating moving magnet and moving coil high, medium, low. And that's super cool. It's got a subsonic filter that uses AI to take out platter rumble and a power switch right there. These are really solid. It's a very hefty metal. This feels like an anodized aluminum casing. It's very heavy for its size. The only gripe I've ever had about IFI in the past has been the boot up time. It takes too long in my opinion. When you press this, it takes a hot second or two. <laughs> I was gonna say a hot minute, but that phrase is inaccurate. It's misleading. It takes a few seconds, uh, a little bit longer than some of the others in this price range. And it's kind of annoying to sit there and wait. On the back of this, we've got the typical phono preamp stuff. Again, I'm not gonna review this product. I kind of wanted to fly through these though real quick. This one is the Air. This is the Zen Phono Air or Zen Air Phono. It's the same thing basically with some uh, minimalization done to the uh, feature set a little bit, but primarily you can uh, use this as a moving magnet or moving coil preamp, albeit with a little bit less gain control, etc. It still has a subsonic filter. This one does have a plastic casing and it's a lot cheaper, but it gives you that same good sound quality. And uh, these are super neat as well. So those are the two phono preamps. Then we've got this thing right here. You'll notice sort of this two-tone colorway is a, is a departure from the old solid front panels. This, I believe, is what they're going with now. I think this is sort of indicative of their latest generation. I think it's their Series 3. Stuff seems to be named 3 now. Um, so yeah, this. let's look at the back here. This is the Zen Can 3, designed for driving cans. That's right, it's a headphone amplifier. Then we have this guy right here, and this is basically an upgraded version of the first device. This is the Zen Phono 3. So the third generation of that preamp and it does kind of the same thing but in a little bit more sophisticated way with a different design specs are also a little bit higher then we've got the new kit on the block this is something very exciting from a packaging standpoint everything ifi does is super nice this box is very premium you can see some of the marketing stuff on the side Touching on a few of the uh, high points here, we have the transmit and receive Bluetooth. We've got low latency. So if you're using it for gaming and you want to make sure that, you know, the latency isn't causing an issue, that's something to consider. It's also got LDAC and AAC compatibility, among others. We'll get into that. And lossless, true lossless Bluetooth. Can it be real? Yes, it is real. And we'll get into that. Specs are on the back. First, let's take off that shrink wrap. Okay, that was pretty smooth, not too bad. Um, gotta have a little bit of a gimmick here. 
on this chair. I mean, everybody's got something, right? So the outer portion just slides off and then we're met with a white box. Open it up like this and we've got a nice little IFI decal sticker, some paperwork, quick start guide in full color. I like it. Then we've got the unit itself. Going to set that aside for now. Silica packet and a little thank you sticker at the bottom. It's the little things. It's the nice little touches. I appreciate it. By the way, this is just a, uh, uh, a tray. And then in the bottom there, you can see it is a micro pack recyclable packaging, which is nice because there's a lot of packaging with this stuff sometimes. And it's good to know that it may be headed towards a landfill, but if it could possibly be recycled, I think that that's a good thing. All right, we've got a Bluetooth antenna. Interesting design choice. They always include these really nice insulated RCA cables with their products. I love these things. So definitely hold on to the great too, especially if you want a nice short quality RCA connector with gold tip and everything. We got the power supply. Yep, it's another wall wart. And I agree, I prefer AC power supplies. This is a USB-A to USB-C cable. Same silica packet. And then we've got this little guy right here, which is going to come into play a little bit later. All right, let's go ahead and remove it from this plastic bag. Is anybody doing unboxings anymore? It seems like more and more channels are just like starting off with the product already out of the box. I think it's fun to kind of see the uh, where it came from, you know, right out of the package. That's something we've tried to provide since day one here on this channel. Okay, so form factor, you know, from the 30,000 foot angle is very similar. Metal construction, we got those nice silicone feet that the products have. Looking here at the front panel, we've got a little peel off. No gimmicks here. Okay, there's gimmicks here, but that's not our gimmick. And there's another one here for this. And I'll explain what those are in a minute. Okay, taking a close look at the front panel here, we do have the power switch. I hope that this one boots up faster. We do have the mode switch next. So that is receiving Bluetooth, transmitting Bluetooth, or if it's going into standalone DAC mode. Next, we have inputs, which include USB, coaxial, and optical for SPDIF, and then an RCA as well. This is kind of a screen but not really it's the logo and it's backlit in a number of different colors and i'll get to that in a minute there's another little light up area here that we'll talk about then there's a transmit mode latency switch so if you want to go low latency for gaming purposes you can do that right here is an option to change the lighting effects you can switch those off completely which is a good thing and that also functions as the bluetooth pairing switch Okay, taking a look at the back, I love how they put the little rubber caps on the RCA terminals, which are gold-plated. You don't see a lot of companies doing that these days, but I think it's a nice touch. So over here in the output section, we do have a 4.4 millimeter balanced out. If you want to connect XLRs, then you would need to cable to this jack. One thing I will say about this, specifically as a DAC, a standalone DAC, you're going to need to use some adapters to get things done. And I'm going to go over that in more detail. But you'll, you're, you're going to notice that there are, from a connectivity standpoint, this isn't as robust as some other standalone DACs. That being said, you can do pretty much everything you need to do. Um, also, analog RCA outputs. We've got analog RCA inputs. And right here, you've got a SPDIF input and output. And you may be saying to yourself, how am I going to plug in an optical cable into that? Well, guess what? That's where this little adapter comes in. You can put in your optical jack right there, the typical type. And then on this end, it is compatible with that jack. So if you need to do that, you want to do that, you can do that. You can also go coaxial into that if you don't want to go optical. You've got your USB-C input for the DAC as well, the Bluetooth jack and the power supply 5 volts. Okay, so looking at the top here, you'll notice that there's this sticker and it's got some uh, basic information specifically for translating what these two little windows, and if you hear me calling them screens, I apologize because they're really just lights. They light up different colors to indicate different things. I'm going to peel this off and that's okay because I have the same information on their little quick start guide right here. There's two windows, like I said, the big one right here is going to show you a couple of things. If you look at this chart right here, it's got three different 
uh, columns. The first one is receive and a number of different codecs, SBC, Aptex, Aptex HD, Aptex Adaptive, Aptex Lossless, yay, LDAC, AAC for iPhones, and LDHC and HWA. I'm not that familiar with that one. On the transmit side, SBC, Aptex HD, Aptex Adaptive, Aptex Adaptive, Aptex Lossless, and LDAC, and then on the DAC side, PCM. The idea is when this is sitting across the room from you, you don't have to have amazing eyes to know and read a screen because you could just glance at the color. Assuming you're not colorblind, my son is, he probably wouldn't appreciate this device very much. Um, you can look at it at a glance and say, oh, I see the color is white. On receive mode, that's lossless. Or I can see that it's blue, that's aptX, or it's gray, that's SBC, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the idea. Similarly, on the audio format window, which is a little round one, you can look and it'll have two different colors. It'll be <laughs> either white for 44.1 and 48 kilohertz, or it will be yellow for 88.2 to 192, basically higher resolution if it's yellow. So that's the basic idea. I say we plug it in. I'm going to press, short press the power switch and nothing seems to happen. I'm going to long press the power switch and we got a blue light flashing there. Tells me it's doing something. I think it's looking for an input that isn't there. So let's go ahead and correct that. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll here. I've got my one audio studio monitors. These are the M60s and they are neutral as monitors are. We've got my SMSL transport here. There's no onboard DAC, so we're purely relying on the IFI for its DAC purposes. Now, we're just talking about DAC so far. We haven't got into the Bluetooth in and out on this. We're gonna still stay tuned for that bit. That's actually kind of the headline feature for this product. But um, and then I've got the IFI CAN 3 headphone amplifier working in conjunction with the Zen Blue. I've also got my iPhone connected via USB-C directly into the IFI. So I've got a couple of different options to test the sound quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a listen and see where we go from there for test music. Again, I'm not gonna be able to play anything in this video, unfortunately, because YouTube compression is just gonna ruin all of the uh, sonic goodness, but just have to trust me on it. So I'm gonna go with Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Always a good choice. And because it's a cool process, I'm going to show putting the disc on the transport. If you wanna see these products reviewed Check out their dedicated videos. And we're off to the races. So I'm gonna listen. This is gonna be the fun part for me. And I'll be right back. So to my ears, this thing sounded absolutely smooth and fantastic. I absolutely loved it wholeheartedly. And um, the ESS DAC just has such a beautiful sound to it. I prefer it over the AKM. As you may know, there's sort of three main players at this level for DAC functionality. You've got the ESS Sabre chips, you've got the AKM Velvet sound chips, and you've got the Cirrus Logic chips as well. I prefer the sound of the ESS, so I'm glad that this device has that ESS chip in it. I think it sounds really good. It's got a good, rich tonality. It's very clear, very open, and it's really exciting because now we're able to unlock a layer of perhaps muddiness or dullness uh, or resolution from our compact disc collection that we already have. So it's kind of like listening to these things for the first time, which is so fun and exciting. You do hear a wider sound stage. You hear more resolution. You hear sort of air in between the instruments and the, the just a wider, more luscious, more open sound. It's kind of like you went from a small cramped in studio to a much larger one that was very finely acoustically tuned. Wow, that was incredible, absolutely incredible. Now that I've listened to it in a couple of different modes, a couple of different sources, I wanna move on to the Bluetooth capabilities. I mentioned earlier, this thing is a Bluetooth lossless device. That means that you can do true lossless over Bluetooth, which may come as a surprise to some folks because Bluetooth started off as a voice only kind of a thing, low quality, couldn't do music on it for years. And then eventually there was, you know, acceptable quality for music. It's continued to advance now. This thing supports Bluetooth 5.4. So in Bluetooth transmit mode, you get this really cool feature that allows you to send any input that you can get into this device 
off to any Bluetooth speaker like this Tretetree mini cone Cuban Missile Crisis looking thing or Bluetooth headphones, whatever you want to do, you can get wireless lossless Bluetooth to that device. Now, whether or not it can receive lossless, well, that's why we've got SBC, Aptics, Adaptive, et cetera, et cetera. You can get some form or fashion of Bluetooth to a Bluetooth device with this. I'm gonna be using this to add that Technics cassette deck into my main system because I'm out of physical inputs and I can do it over Bluetooth. So this will do a great job and it'll do it super high quality as well. So I've got a CD transport here. This is for demonstration purposes only, connectivity testing. This is not like a high fidelity sound test for you, but just demonstrating for the purposes of this video. I got my CD transport running optically into here and this Bluetooth out functionality into this wireless Bluetooth speaker. As you can see, there's no cables attached. By the way, these are really cool. The big one, do you remember the big one? It's like three feet tall. I still have that thing. It sounds incredible. But uh, here we go, jars of clay. Remember jars of clay? And latency seems to be pretty reasonable as well. My favorite song by these guys is Flood. Do you remember Flood? Anyway, so that's that's the idea. Now you can use it as a Bluetooth receiver as well. So if you have this cabled hardwire into your powered speakers, your stereo system, etc., you can stream audio from your phone into this as many Bluetooth devices offer that functionality. So Bluetooth in and out. What a cool little device. Definitely a multitude of uses for it. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got the CD transport, the SMSL DAC, and I've got the IFI over here with the antenna connected this time. It works a lot better that way. I was able to get it connected at Aptex HD, which will be good enough for my purposes for sure. All right, my friends, and that's going to do it. Don't forget our $1 membership program, our exclusive 45 adapters, new color coming soon. We've got Halloween merch coming your way, some T-shirts that were designed very recently in-house, and I can't wait to share those with you. So many fun things are coming your way. Don't forget our Amazon store link is in the description along with the product link for this. No surprise. I love this DAC. I love this Bluetooth transmitter receiver. So it's a double thumbs up. And then also we've got our podcast that we're doing. So check out our podcast. It's a lot of fun. My friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.